Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to gather a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. I'm continuing with my Zettelcast and side trip, and I have some fun for you tonight. I'm going to take an example from a bib card, extract it onto a main card, making the right notes, finding its location, where it should go, all the way to filing it into the Zettelcast so that you can have a complete review of the process. So uh, before I go any further, I'm going to switch to the down facing camera and we'll get to work. Okay, here we are with our setup. I have three different bib cards. They're all drawn from the same book. This is Peterson and Seligman's Character Strengths and Virtues. And the card that I'm working with is drawn from three different cards that I, uh, bib cards, where I've been taking notes on this book. And this is a very important process because this relates to the concept uh, that you get from Mortimer Adler's book, How to Read a Book, because this is coming to terms with the author. And if this is the point in the book where the authors are explaining the their entire system under which they have gathered all of their data, they're forming measurements. This is a, a very vital prelude to the whole rest of the book. So it's absolutely essential that this material, that this concept be brought to the book. I have to understand it completely and bring that thought pattern to everything beyond it that I read in this book because the authors are being very, very careful to give me their terms. And what we're looking at here is they're defining a hierarchy that has three levels. The, the outermost level is that the authors define is the level of the virtues. And they describe a virtue as basically being the, the core values that have been agreed upon by moral philosophers and religious thinkers. Then from there, their next more detailed level that they talk about is the level of the character strengths, which they say are the processes or the mechanisms that define the virtues and are the roots to displaying the virtues. And their uh, most detailed level, they describe as the situational themes, which they say are very, very specific to settings and cultures and uh, even genders. And it's specific habits, they say, that lead people to manif manifest the character strengths. So, these are the three levels that they're talking about, and all of their work is going to depend on these three levels that they're defining. Now, it's rather interesting because one of the things that they declare, and they are quite clear about, is that they say that their hierarchy is modeled on the Linnaean uh, classification system quite deliberately in, in the levels of obstruction, where uh, Linnaeus was the founder of the classification for plants and animals. So this being extremely important, I felt that it needed to go on a, a single uh, card, main card. I didn't want to spread it across three cards because it's the nature of the hierarchy that's the most important thing. So I gathered all of that information, the three levels, onto one card. And having done that, having brought forth both their goal of modeling after Linnaeus and all of the definitions that they give for their three levels, I had filled an entire card. Well, I have an absolute philosophy that I will not add a card 
to my Zettelkasten that doesn't include my reaction. So that meant I had to go to a second card. I don't hesitate to go to two cards. If it's going to start turning into an essay, I will go to my yellow legal pad and wax on as far as I want to if I'm feeling very long-winded. But in this case, a second card was quite enough to provide my reaction to it. Now, the first reaction, I actually had to, to include two reactions because if the first and the most obvious is I have to take these authors at their terms. It's their book. They're defining their terms and their research. And if I do not conform my, at least my mentality to their way of thinking, I will not correctly interpret what they cover in their book. So I have to ex uh, accept at face value that this is their hierarchy. However, I cannot escape noticing that in point of fact, despite their claim that they deliberately modeled against the Linnaean classification system, in reality, they have not met the basic characteristic of the Linnaean classification system. And to explain that, huh, once again, I've got to go back to jellyfish. Poor jellyfish. Jellyfish belong to the animal kingdom, and they belong to the phylum Nidaria, and there's two different classes, Psychophozoa and Cubozoa. Okay, three levels, kingdom, phylum, class. You could go on to species order, etc. But I'm picking three because they chose three. And one of the things that you immediately notice in the Linnaean classification is that all Psyphozoa are Nidaria. And all Nidaria are animals. So however deep you go in the classification system, every one of these, of the entries are all of the same type. But you absolutely cannot say in the Peterson and Seligman's classification, you could not accurately say that all situational themes are virtues that are character strengths and all character strengths are virtues that does not hold they are in fact defining a pathway it is a hierarchy sort of in abstraction but far less an abstraction than in functional role because they in fact define their virtues as the goal the destination the character strengths are the paths to the destination and the situational themes are the habits that lead to the establishment of the character strengths. So they are all different types of things. And therefore, the hierarchy is not really um, one of abstraction. The hierarchy that they're demonstrating is actually one of causality. So uh, I had to at least make note of that. And that's in part because my belief is that the correct way to establish a hierarchy is through an understanding of the underlying struggles. And that's the only way you're going to get a sane hierarchy. But I have to suspend that in order to get full value out of the book that I'm reading by Peterson and Zellerman, I have to put their vision on and read their book in the light of their vision. So now where is this card going to go? For me, I, I created this tagline, Character, Strengths, and Virtues. I just used it as an abbreviation. Hierarchy runs virtues, character, strengths, themes. And to me, that line will bring back the whole discussion of the of this card, both their hierarchy and my feelings about their hierarchy. So now where is it going to go? It occur it, I believe that the most operative word here is hierarchy. So that's the one I'm going to dive into to find where to file this card. And when I go into my letter H, 
well, of course, the first letter H in my index, the first thing that I always, always do is look to see if I have a devoted card to hierarchy, and I don't. So that means I'm going to be looking through the general letter H cards. And in fact, I only have one other reference to it, and that is 4D6B, Maslow's hierarchy and the character trait groups. I felt that that's close enough because we're still in the concept of hierarchy and we're certainly character traits means that it's on a related theme. So this to me felt like it was close enough of a match to go in, in this general vicinity of 4D6B. So now when I go to pull this card to see where it's exactly going to go, I don't just pull 4D6B. I pull a whole clump of cards in the vicinity of 4D6B. So here's 4D6B. This is the Maslow's Hierarchy card. And I just want to get a sense of what surrounds this card to get a feeling for where in this general conversation do I want my new card to go. And I noticed that early on, I actually have a directory here, which indicates there's already a conversation happening under card 4D6. And turns out that 4D6 is my note that the theory of character traits is the struggle, which I just brought up. And I think their theory of character traits is a path to achieving the character trait, I think is, in, is possibly inaccurate. So I decided that, yes, the word hierarchy fits here and the word character trait fits here, but thematically and conversationally, I think it belongs in this conversation on the theory of character traits. And so I'm thinking about making it card C, making it 4D6C. But I want to take a little bit further look on these other cards that are in the vicinity before I make up my mind absolutely. And what I discover when I do that is that this 4D6A is on an interesting concept. It's how um, a multiplayer role, tabletop role play game can um, give you some interesting uh, insights into behavior by assigning behavior to a character. Mm, that seems a little more remote than where I'm going. Um, and the one that follows it and develops on it um, was, was closely related to this uh, a book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, where he talks about four basic rules for, basic, for good behavior. Um, and so it seemed to me that the most closely related card in the group was actually this 4D6, the theory of the character traits is the struggle. And I elect, I'm electing to place this card as 4, 4D6C. So I'm going to give it that number right now. So now it's got its, it's officially got its number. And of course, I'm not finished until I add it to the directory. And I will include the entire tagline. CSV hierarchy runs virtues, character strengths, themes. And that is going to bring back this entire conversation now when I read these three. I've got a very interesting conversation going in terms of, well, how do we end up defining what, um, what character strength, what the character traits, how are they organized how does their hierarchy work? So after I write in this tagline, 
copy this tagline over to here. I will have one more job to do, and that will be to index this card on each of these keywords. Okay, then I have one other thing to deal with, and that is now that I know that my card number is going to be 4D6C, my next task is to take that card number and transfer it to each of these three cards. And if you can see where I have placed the red line, that tells me that I have selected this piece of information on the virtues, this one on the character strengths, and this one on the situational themes. And each one of these is going to get the number of the card that I just added so that I know where that information went into my Zettelkasten. And I tend to write it in a, in a different color, um, red or blue. Uh, I'll do it in red right now. Okay, so now I have, I know where that information uh, got its home in my Zettelkasten, and I know that I extracted that particular information out of the card, although I did not specifically extract other pieces of information that were present on those two cards. These were the ones that I felt were important enough to go through the process of becoming a main card and joining my Zettelkasten. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, practice session of filing one card. Um, it doesn't really take as long as you might think once you actually get into it. And it, boy, it sure gets a lot of thinking going. Look at all the ideas that came together. Everything from Dungeons and Dag Dragons to Maslow's hierarchy to the question of struggles versus the the, strict, the method of paths for forming hierarchies, an amazing number of ideas all came together and are beginning to form a rather interesting conversation. Plus, I've been able to completely internalize the hierarchy that Peterson and Seligman will be using for the entire rest of their book. And whether I agree with them or not, I have to accept their hierarchy or I won't understand where they're going with their work. So thank you for sticking with me on this. I hope you enjoyed it. Good night.